We want to bring in Dr. Susanna Hills now. She's a pediatric airway surgeon and an assistant ENT professor at Columbia University Medical Center. So, Doctor, you know, we heard David's piece, those two individuals, particularly the man in David's piece, saying that he didn't listen to doctors or family when they told him he ought to get vaccinated. What are your colleagues finding is the biggest deterrent when it comes to people being vaccinated? Yeah, it's just so hard to hear that story, Emory. Um, and I'm seeing that very same thing happening in my own clinic on Friday. I had a mom come into my clinic um, asking about getting her daughter vaccinated. And she was explaining to me how she did not get herself vaccinated, didn't feel comfortable until she had been sick with COVID twice. So it's so hard to hear these stories when this is an illness that's preventable. I've heard concerns across the spectrum um, about the vaccine from concerns that the vaccine causes the disease to concerns that the vaccine causes fertility issues. We know from the millions and millions of people who've been vaccinated that these things aren't true. These are not risks of getting the vaccine, um, but it's, it's really challenging to see people still getting sick. And the vast, vast majority, like David was saying, are folks who are unvaccinated. 97% of people who are hospitalized right now with COVID-19 are unvaccinated people. And we can change that, we can get people vaccinated, but people have to understand this is not the virus of 2020, this is the virus of 2021. This is the Delta variant, it's a new virus, it's a new strain, and people who have been concerned to get vaccinated really need to rethink why they're concerned, talk to people, get some more information and education, um, and, and think about it hard. I would urge everybody who hasn't been vaccinated to really think about it again and ask all the questions you need to ask to, to get the information you need. Doctor, let me ask you about the role that misinformation plays in where we are right now in this country. Uh, there are news reports of a young ER nurse in Lafayette, Louisiana, uh, named Olivia Guidry, who was a nurse who worked in the medical profession, um, who recently passed away because she was infected with COVID-19. But months before that, a year before that, she had spread misinformation about the vaccine, saying that it was a way to control people, um, allegedly. And, and I just wonder if you've got some medical professionals. I mean, Emory and I are always on uh, social media pointing out that there are some people who claim that they're MDs that are putting out misinformation about the vaccine. Is it any surprise to you then that, you know, in other words, I'm, I don't want to blame people who are hearing from what they believe to be trusted sources, either other medical professionals, people in the news business that they feel are more trustworthy than perhaps others, or even their own family members. Yes, glad that is, uh, that is a huge concern. There are a lot of people with very public platforms who are giving all kinds of information. Some of it is very helpful and useful from places like the CDC and the FDA and, um, and national medical organizations. Some of it is absolutely inaccurate and harmful information coming from other sources. And it can be really hard to sort through and figure out what is the information that, that you need to rely on. My, my advice again, and I go back to this with all of my, all, all of my friends, neighbors, patients, people who ask me is that if you're not sure, if you're concerned, go to a trusted source trained in medicine, like your primary care doctor, that one-on-one -on -one relationship, someone you know personally who has medical training, who can give you the advice you need, that can be a really great resource. But it's incredibly concerning to see all of these platforms that, um, that are so very public that have been uh, putting forth information that can be harmful. It's, it's challenging and it's really exhausting for all of the healthcare providers who, all of us who've been um, seeing these, these cases happen over and over and over again, knowing that we could be seeing fewer and fewer and fewer cases if people um, could trust the information they were getting if they were getting vaccinated, if they were wearing masks in communities where case rates are higher. Um, it's been hard. 
I think also, Doctor, what's sort of scary about this Delta variant is increasingly we've been hearing not a lot of stories, but we've been hearing stories of people with these breakthrough infections mm. who end up getting sick even though they've been inoculated. So now we have Los Angeles County reinstating their indoor mask mandate. Whether you got the shot or not, if you're inside, they want you wearing a mask this weekend. What, you know, what's your uh, take on that? Um, and, you know, do you, do you foresee other cities doing the same thing? Yeah, absolutely, Emory, and I think it's the right thing to do. We're going to be seeing more of this, um, and what this is is an appropriate response to a change in the environment. In L.A., they've been seeing a 1,000 new cases a day for about a week. It was time to do something different. And so what they decided to do was reinstate the mask mandates that had been in place for, um, for indoor uh, functioning in restaurants and stores, et cetera. And I think that, that that's absolutely the right thing to do. And I'm hoping and I, and I feel quite sure that this is a pattern we're going to see in areas where case numbers start to tick up. Um, it certainly should be happening in areas where case numbers start to tick up. And with this Delta variant and with less than half the country, remember, under 50 percent of people in our country are fully vaccinated. And so with that many people still unprotected against this Delta variant, we will continue to see case numbers go up. And, um, and we'll continue to see adjustments to the environment, hopefully. So could one of those adjustments, Susanna, be, you know, I, I, sus I suspect a lot of people are looking at what's happening, for example, in Los Angeles and seeing the rise of this Delta variant. And you know, in New York City and in other parts of the country, many companies are putting into place plans for people to return somewhat in a limited basis, limited capacity mm -hmm. after the summer in September. Could you see, can you envision or, or, for, or foresee a, a world where many of these companies decide to delay those returns because of the rise of the Delta variant, especially as we get into flu season come September? Yes, I, I, I could foresee it. Um, you know, it's hard to predict, like we've learned throughout this virus, two months from now is, is, a, is something that's totally unpredictable. Um, the one thing we can't predict is that there will be more cases uh, as we still need to do so much work with vaccination. But one of the things that's been helpful in, in controlling the spread of this disease has been remote functioning, limited um, group, group activities, limiting people together in, in the workplace. So I think to some extent we will see that continue. Um, I think that if we you know, get more and more people vaccinated, if we have people that are willing to wear masks, we can do less and less of that. I think if there are ways to safely go back to work, but I think there'll be a combination, sort of a hybrid environment where we've got, you know, a mixture of people um, working remote, uh, remote, remote work environments into their general workplace policies. And I think that's a good thing. Um, I think it will be a helpful, healthy option when case numbers go up and when, when the risk is higher. All right, Dr. Susanna Hills, as always, we thank you. Appreciate it.